This screencast covers the materials from Module 2, Lesson 6. We'll do a couple problems from the problem set, modeling use of the area model and the standard algorithm. After that, we'll get you started and give you some clues for a couple of the word problems from the homework. Okay, let's start with the area model. Uh, yesterday we did, or the previous lesson, we did the area model and we kept it fairly simple. That's because we were talking about smaller digits where we didn't have to do a lot of regrouping or any regrouping at all for that matter. But today we're going to have to regroup. We no longer have ones, twos, and threes, maybe even fours. We're getting into larger uh, digits. So we're going to make our area models a little bit more sophisticated and a little bit more complex. Since we are going to be working with regrouping here, we're going to not only decompose the second factor, we're going to decompose the first. And 48, we'll decompose that into four tens, or 40. Plus eight ones, 48. All right. Now we're going to decompose the second factor. Again, we're going to kind of reverse this. We're going to put the ones on the top, so we have five ones, and we have thirty, uh, or three tens, or thirty. So now we're going to work with this, and we're going to relate it to the standard algorithm. So we're going to start at the top, and we're going to work from the right to the left. So we have. 5 times 8, and that equals 40. Now we're going to the next uh, place where we multiply 5 ones times 4 tens, and that is 20 tens, which is the same as 200. Now we're going to the, uh, the next uh, with the 30s here, and again we're going to start with the ones and go to our tens place just like we would in the standard algorithm. So I'm now multiplying thir three tens, three tens, times eight ones, and that would be twenty-four tens. Twenty-four tens is two hundred forty. Next, we're going to multiply thir three tens times four tens, which would give us twelve hundreds, and twelve hundreds is one thousand two hundred. Now we're going to find the sum of these going horizontally. So we're going to add 20, or excuse me, 200 plus 40, and we get 240. We're going to now add the 1,200 and add the 240, and the sum is 1,440. Now we're going to relate that to our standard algorithm. And we'll, we'll point out the similarities by drawing some uh, arrows to match parts. So let's start. We have 3 ones times uh, 8 ones, which is equal to 40. We'll regroup that 4. And now I have 5 ones times 4 tens which is 200, or 20 tens. So we add our 4, and we get 240. And now we'll go on to our next place. We're going to multiply th by 3 tens, so we're going to put our 0 in there. 3 tens times 8 ones is 240, or 24 tens. So we'll put down our 4 and regroup the two. Now I'm going to multiply three tens times four tens and I get twelve hundredths and I'm going to add my two hundredths to it so I get this. Now you can see that our partial product in the area model corresponds perfectly to our partial products in the standard algorithm. Now all we have to do is find the sum of the partial products so, 0 plus 0 is 0. 4 plus 4 is 8. 
2 plus 4 is 6 and 1. So the answer is 1,680. Let's do another example to make sure that you have this down. You'll have two like this on the homework, and then you're going to do a few problems just using the standard algorithm. All right, once again, this one's even more complex because we have not a two-digit by two-digit problem, but we have a three-digit by two-digit. Not that much more complicated, though. So we're going to draw our area model once again. Keep grabbing the wrong tool. And we're going to make it a little longer this time because we have more places. So I'm going to decompose my 648. And it's almost like expanded form. So I have 600 plus 40 plus 8. And we'll draw some lines here to denote our places. Make it roughly proportional to size. We'll decompose the second factor. So we'll have five ones. We're going to have three tens or thirty. So we'll multiply. So I have five times eight, and that is forty. I have five times forty, that's two hundred. And I have five times 600, which is 3,000. Let's go on to the next. I'm going to multiply three tens times eight ones. I get 240, or 24 tens. We're going to now multiply three tens times four tens, and that gives us 12 hundreds. And we're going to multiply six hundreds times thirty, six hundreds times three tens, and that gives us thousands. So we're going to have eighteen thousands. Find the partial products. This one's easy. We have zero in the ones place. I have four in the tens place. I have two in the hundreds place, and I have three in the thousands place. This one's not so difficult either. I have zero in the ones place. I have four in the tens place. And I combine these two in the hundreds place. So two plus two is four. So we have four hundreds. We have, uh, I have an eight in the thousands place and a one for a total of nine in the thousands place and one in the ten thousandths place. Those are our partial products. They should correspond to what we do when we solve the problem itself using the standard algorithm. Five times eight is forty. Five times four is twenty plus four is twenty-four. Five times six is thirty plus two is 32, so we have 3,240, and we can see that that corresponds. So now we will uh, work with our tens place, so we're going to put in that zero. And I have 3 times 8 is 24. Regroup the 2. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Regroup the 1. And 3 times 6 is is 18 plus 1 is 19 and you can see that again our partial products correspond so now we'll find the sum of our two partial products 0 8 in the tens place 6 in the hundreds place and 12 in the thousands place so we need to regroup and we end up with 22,680 now these two examples should uh, be enough to get you through that homework. And now we're going to look at some word problems and just kind of consider how we're going to approach them. All right. Each of 25 students in Mr. McDonald's class sold 16 raffle tickets. If one if each ticket costs $15,
How much money did Mr. McDonald's students raise? Let's look at her statement here. I'm going to write Mr. McDonald's. Students raised blank. Now that's going to be dollars, right? Well, okay. We know that one unit here, looking at this, one unit is 15. We have to figure out how many units. And that's going to be the more difficult of the task. But I'm going to write now one unit equals fifteen dollars. We don't know how many units there are. So we're going to have to do some math. Let's look at the first statement. We have twenty-five students and each sold sixteen raffle tickets. Alright, well, we're going to have to make a tape diagram. How many students are there? There are twenty-five. We're not going to draw twenty-five individual boxes. We can use our ellipsis shortcut and we'll just do this. 16, maybe one more, right our ellipsis and 16. We can number these 1, 2, 3, and 25. So how are we going to find that? Well, we're going to find the number of units, which would be the number of tickets sold by applying uh, this tape diagram. I think most of you are able to make an expression. We'll find the number of units and we'll apply that to the one unit equals fifteen dollars. Let's go on to the next example. Jason buys a car and pays by installments. Each installment is five hundred sixty seven dollars per month after forty eight months Jason still still owes one thousand two hundred fifty what is the total price well forty eight months and paying this much each month we should be able to figure out what that is on a tape diagram so we have five hundred sixty seven 567, 567. And again, we're not going to draw every one of these, but I'm going to write 1, 2, 48. Now, these are the payments. But he still owes more money. So we have the payments and the owed. And looking at this tape diagram, I think it should become clear what we need to do. It's a two-step problem. Uh, and I think it's pretty clearly laid out here. Uh, so if you need to copy the tape diagram, do some thinking and finish your homework doing a good job.